Guys, welcome to part one of our new three-part weight loss series. We've released videos in the past, we've listened to you guys, you've asked for more, and what you can do to start down your weight loss path. Well, today is all about that. So, we need a few tools as we're getting started. Um, you don't have to go out and buy anything crazy, right? All we are talking about is having just some basic fun tools, if you will. When we are talking about beginning down this path to weight loss, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is just start to introduce the basics of human movement. Now, why do I have three different ball types here? Well, these are for a bit of progressing for you. Now, what I want you to start with and what I want you to think about is that coordination, agility, balance, these are all things that are critical to human movement and often, if we are in a place where we need to lose weight, then we have often reached a point where those things have started to falter because we haven't given them much focus or attention for a while. And before we even start down this like crazy cardio path or picking up heavy weights or anything like that, I want you guys to be thinking about reinitiating these critical phases of human movement. So today is really about beginning good movement again. Now, where do we start? Step one, balance. Can you stand and balance on one foot? Okay, it seems simple and it seems just almost frustratingly simple, but I want you to start here. Can you balance for one minute on each foot? Can you alternate? Okay, take note, Does, is one foot more balanced than the other? Do you have one where you just can't do it? If so, I want you to have a prop nearby. Maybe it's a PVC pipe, maybe it's a door frame but you need to be able to practice standing on one foot. Get your feet learning how to articulate underneath you and how to support you because your feet are your grounding force. They are what help you stay in place and they are going to be the foundation. I mean, literally, they're the foundation of your body. Treat them first, okay? So begin to work on your balance there. Now, let's get back to the balls. If you can do that, if you can balance on one foot successfully, then I want you to start adding in a little bit of a challenge to it. Now we're gonna add in some coordination. Can you, while balancing, throw a ball back and forth? Okay, can you take a ball and bounce it while you're balancing? Can you switch feet and bounce that ball? Right? What we're starting to do now is coordinate mind-body connections. So not only am I balancing, but now I'm adding in coordination and agility here. Right? And I want you to put focus into everything that you do. Don't just do it passively. Do it with intention. Now, can you do that? Can you do it with that one ball, tossing or bouncing? Great. Now, can you juggle? Right? Or can you stand against a wall and can you bounce it off the wall? Just make it up as you go, but make it different. Make it challenging. If you can do it with one bouncy ball, try a different type of ball. This one's just kind of a hollow, spiky ball. So I really have to throw it to get some bounce. Can I throw something high and catch it, right? All we're doing is trying to challenge your body to reinitiate human movement, the things that are necessary. If your feet can't articulate underneath you to help you balance and walk, then there's no point in moving on to heavy weights or high volume or all this stuff. It starts with your foundation, okay? Now, let's say you get comfortable with that ball. Well, now find a bit of a more challenging surface. Okay, so now I'm gonna try balancing on a foam pad and throwing a ball, all right? This is a little bit harder. I encourage you to be very firm on your footing before you introduce some sort of challenging surface. Um, and I also encourage you to do this barefoot. Yes, I have shoes on, I'm in a gym, but at home, take your shoes off, take your socks off, do this barefoot. Let your toes feel the ground and let them start turning on. Okay, so that's step one, just beginning to move. Now, next, I want you to start adding in some kind of a gentle push and some kind of a gentle pull of the arms. Learn to push, learn to pull your own body weight. Now, I've set up a bar here, but for you, it could be stairs, uh, stair railings, it could be your bed frame, it could be a, a, a dresser, any elevated surface. What I want you to be able to do is establish a good plank, meaning a straight line from your ears all the way down to your heels. And I want you to be able to maintain that plank and with elbows, starting with elbows at full extension, 
Lower, keeping the elbows into the body, your chest to the bar or to the surface, and press back up. Now, if it's a flat surface, I'm gonna to have to have my hands flat. I won't be able to grip. But the point is, you want it to be high enough that you can do perfect reps for eight, or perfect sets for eight to 10 reps. Can I do eight to 10 controlled, where I fully extend the elbow, fully bring the body down to the bar without my body contorting to do that, okay? Then I would like you to move to a pull. And now we, if you, know, if you have some kind of a bar surface or get creative with this, it could be straps looped around something solid above, um, it could be rings, it, it, get creative. Find a way to, to do this pull. But what I'm looking for here is the same concept, ex except now I'm gonna reverse it. So I want to elevate my hips and pull my chest to the surface. Again, this could be done with rings, it could be done with whatever you want, but the angle should be easy enough. So the higher, the easier. Make sure that you can accomplish the right movements first. Don't just challenge yourself where you have to break. Always thinking, I wanna be able to accomplish three to five sets of eight to 10 reps of these movements and start to turn the body back on. That's what it's about. All right, if we're going down this weight loss path, make sure that we have a good foundation, turn the body on so that it's able to move and it's able to support you as you develop in this process. Now, finally, of course, we have the rowing machine. Now, when it comes to using this thing for weight loss, I want you to start with the basics. Now, that means going back, watching our videos on good movement, and I want you to think about not deviating by getting the knees out too wide or breaking your posture. Don't worry if you are rowing short right now. Just do it with good movement, okay? Because as you improve and as you go down this journey, you will start to lose weight, you will start to get better range of motion, your mobility will increase, and therefore you will be able to start getting deeper and deeper into the catch. But for right now, practice the good movement principles that we've laid out. Trust me, you can still get a great workout rowing at half slide because it's all in the push of the legs. It's gonna elevate your heart rate and that's gonna get you comfortable there. Now, I don't want you rowing for any more than one to three minutes at a time on this machine as you get started in the first few weeks, okay? Spend some time just getting, getting comfortable letting your heart rate elevate again and don't push the intensity yet. Let's just get you sweaty, let's get you hot and let's get you comfortable with getting back into movement. Guys, this is part one of your three-part weight loss series. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. And as always, make sure that you guys go sign up for our newsletter, The Hustler's Guide to Rowing, on darkhorserowing.com, where you will also find the Dark Horse Academy, where we teach coaches how to use this machine for your clients and athletes that are looking to get better on this machine. We give you programming and coaching there. Guys, as always, we will see you on the other side and in part two.